welcome to this session of h2k infosys so thanks for watching this particular video so today we are going to see the uh, java uh, language as a whole and we're going to see what is java all about and what are the features of java so from today's uh, we're going to start about the core java concepts so before we start the the concepts on a java language we're going to first see uh, the the language as a whole what is this language all about and what are the features of this particular language which has made it so much popular in the last uh, two sessions uh, we've gone through the course details and we've gone through the history of selenium as a whole and let us move forward with the other aspects of our course and that's precisely today we're going to see what is java and then discuss about what are the different features of java so let's roll so what's java we have a lot of questions in our mind we have a lot of innovations uh, we have uh, preconceptions or there's some con concept we already have in into our, in our in our mind so we'll see what is java all about so there are certain features or other certain main points of java it's a open source language it's a programming language uh, and a computing platform which was released by sun microsystems in 1995 apparently the latest version of uh, java is 1.8 and uh, the co uh, core company which made java that is sun microsystem was taken over by oracle a couple of years back so right now it's oracle java uh, the the language as a whole the java language was made from c plus plus C++ uh, is an object-oriented programming language which uses a lot of pointers and other uh, other features uh, which are not of this particular features. Some features are present in Java. Some features are actually we have been removed. Uh, so it enforces the object-oriented programming concepts as we have in C++ programming. Uh, Java can be used for very simple applications uh, and it can be also used to create very complex applications like your banking applications or finance based applications or insurance based applications. You can create simple applications to work in a single environment or a single machine rather or create uh, complex applications to be uh, worked upon in a distributed architecture. The distributed architecture would consist of servers and clients in a network and we can run Java programs in all these kind of environments. Coming back to the fourth point, it basically has a sm small concept which is nothing but the concept of applets. Applets are nothing but small application modules uh, which are part of uh, web applications or web pages. These applets would make a web page dynamic so this is uh, because of applets which makes our web pages dynamic into nature interactive into nature so that's all about a small uh, write-up on java going forward we'll see certain features of java the first feature which comes into the mind is that it's a simple language it's a simple language because it uses the same syntax as we have in C++. The other features uh, which are part of your Java is it's secure and that is why a lot of companies do still use it, specifically companies which are into your BFSI domain or in your travel and leisure domain still do use Java because it is highly secure into nature. It's dynamic because of the fact that there's a lot of dynamicity maintained to manipulate codes and to create codes and it's a since it's an object oriented programming language it can be used for high performance applications and for <coughs> excuse me greater memory management it's highly it's highly inter interpreted and distributed language which is portable into nature so portable into nature because of the fact that you can create the code in a particular platform let's say in windows platform and port the same code over other platforms 
the important fact is that Java uses the concept of byte coding. We have something known as Java virtual machines in which a compiler is present. The compiler actually transforms transforms a source code to a byte code and this byte code is responsible for making the Java language as a portable language or a platform independent language. So let, let's look certain features of Java. First feature is a simple uh, simply, uh, simplicity of the language. It uses the same syntax as C++. So people who know C++ will uh, look at it uh, with very soft eyes. Uh, no need to remove any unreferenced objects. So we have the concept of object oriented programming in Java. So these object needs to be referenced uh, with uh, with datas, with, with methods and with variables properly. And these references are required to secure the codes. Certain objects are not initialized and they are called as unreferenced objects. And these kind of unreferenced object creates memory leaks which actually affects the performance of the codes or the performance of the application. So since Java has automatic garbage collections, these garbage collection actually automatically take care of these memory leaks so that the performance of the application is not compromised. Next part, it, it basically removes any confusion or many confusing features of C++ like your explicit pointers and operator overloading. These were actually removed from Java because it was a complex behavior to use pointers and operator overloading in C++. To make this language simpler, these features were removed in the Java language. Going forward, it's an object oriented programming language and because it is object oriented programming language, the memory management is better. Uh, the, the, let us look at the points which are part of the object oriented program, um, point, um, method. So methodology that simplifies software development and maintenance by providing some, some rules. So any, any language or any programming language which uses the concept of object oriented programming, uh, the usage of the language becomes easier because uh, the codes can be created using simple rules defined in the object oriented programming. Because of the object oriented, uh, oriented programming, the coding structure is easy, the memory management is easy. The next aspect of our object oriented is that organizes our software as a combination of different types of objects that incorporates both data and behavior. And because of the object oriented programming concept present in Java language, the codes are secure, the data are secure, and the modules present or the modules developed using Java language become secure. Next part, what do we need to understand as far as OOPS is concerned? So if we will basically understand what is OOPS, OOPS are nothing but the concept of objects. So objects are nothing but entities. So any entity will have class and properties. And the properties can be nothing but your methods or variables. This is a simple concept of object oriented programming. So in terms of object oriented programming, what we need to know is what are objects, what are classes, what is the concept of inheritance, what is the concept of interfacing or interfaces, what's polymorphism, what's ab abstraction encapsulation. So we're going to look at this at a later point of time. So let's understand this, that this is what we need to, un we need to actually learn as far as OOPS concept is concerned. Going forward, other features of Java language are the platform independency of the language. What makes it platform independent? So the first point which speaks about the concept of platform independency or the, con the feature of Java is Java provides software based platform. So it provides a independent platform which is software based. And this software based platform speaks with hardware based platform and it is independent of the hardware. Java platform differs from other platforms in the sense that it is software based platform that runs on top of hardware based platform. So what's the meaning of this particular point? It means that we can have any kind of hardware based platform. The only thing that we need to do is that we need to create the code with Java which is 
uh, provide or rather provides a software based platform and this software based platform pre present in the Java language works on top of hardware based platform in order to talk with it. So we don't have to worry about the hardware. We just have to worry about creating the codes on this software based platform provided by the Java language. As a whole, Java language has two important components, the runtime environment and the API, the application programming interface. We're going to look at this runtime environment and application programming interface at a later point of time. But yes, as we have discussed earlier, create a code in one platform and run the code in multiple platform. So Java codes can be run in multiple platform. For example, if we create codes in Windows, we can run the same code or other the same program in Linux, Sun Solaris and Mac. The only thing required is that the platform on which we are running the code should have Java virtual machine. So let's say I am creating, I've created the code with Windows. I want to run the program in Linux. Linux should have JVM, Java virtual machine. I want to run the program in Sun Solaris. Sun Solaris system should have JVM. That is the only requirement Java has. Now, how is how it is made possible? Now, we have something known as a compiler in Java Virtual Machine. This compiler converts the source code into byte codes. And this byte code is what makes Java a platform independent coding language. This byte code can be run in multiple platforms with the only facility that it should have a Java Virtual Machine. And that is why Java language is called a WORA, Vora language. It means write once, run anywhere. So that's about platform independency. So going forward, we're going to see the uh, certain diagram on platform independency and what, which particular feature of Java makes the language platform independent. So let us look at this particular diagram. So we see there's a class file out here. Now, when we write our codes, the codes are actually saved in .java extension files. When we compile, the, when the Java compiler compile the codes, the same .java extension files are saved as a dot class extension files it is this dot class extension file which makes java a platform independent language so what we need to do is that the compiled dot class extension files can be taken to a windows platform and it can be run so the same dot class extension file can be taken to a linux platform and we can run the same program in linux environment the same dot class extension file can be put in a Mac environment and we can run the same Java program. So it is because of the dot class extension file which makes Java a magical language or rather a platform independent language. So we can create the dot class extension file let's say in Windows. I can run the dot class extension in, in Linux. The only thing required is the Linux environment should have the JVM installed. I can Take the same dot class extension file in a Mac environment. The only thing that require require is that the Mac environment should have the JVM installed. That is why Java is called a platform independent language. And the independency of Java language comes because of this dot class extension file. Moving ahead, let us see other features of your Java, the secure feature. Java is secure because there's no explicit pointers. Since there's no explicit pointers, these codes are secure. Explicit pointers is a concept present in C++. And since C++ uses this particular concept, the security is uh, compromised uh, in, in, in codes made with C++. Since Java does not use the pointer concept, the codes are much more secure. The next aspect which makes our Java a secure language is because of the fact that the programs that we develop or the codes that we write down actually runs inside the virtual machine sandbox. Now let us look at a particular diagram which says what are the difference between running the Java program inside a virtual machine sandbox versus a C++ which directly talks with the OS. Now if you see in the left hand side, we see that 
there is a diagram in which C++ application is there and it directly speaks with the OS. So if there is a problem with the OS or there is a malicious code which is running in the operating system, it can affect the C++ program. As far as Java is concerned, which is towards the right hand side, the Java application of the program runs inside the virtual machine and it is this virtual machine which speaks with the OS. So there is no direct talk between the Java program and the OS. The talk happens with this intermediator which is nothing but the Java virtual machine. And this Java virtual machine actually saves or secures the Java program from malicious codes present in the OS. That is why Java is secure. Further, going to the deep analysis of security of the Java language, there's a concept known as class loaders, byte codes, and security managers. And these class loaders basically add security by separating the package for the classes of the local file system from those that are imported from the network resources. We have the concept of byte code verifiers, which verifies the fragments of code for illegal coding present, and if there is a violation in the access rights of the codes. Similarly, security manager determines which resources in a class file can access uh, a particular data based on the reading, writing, and editing concept. So we're going to see about the class loader, byte, lo byte code verifier, and security manager at a later point of time. But these are the micro level analysis which makes or uh, micro level concepts which makes Java a secure language. Going forward, other features of Java, robustness. Why is Java a robust language? Because it has a strong memory management and the strong memory management comes because of the object-oriented programming concept and because of automatic garbage collection present inside the Java language. There's no pointers present in Java and since there's a lack of pointers in Java, there's no security problem in Java. That makes Java a robust language. And we have discussed this particular part, the third point that is it has automatic garbage collection, which makes memory management better because it is able to automatically collect the memory leaks, which makes the performance an important criteria for any Java based programs. And there's a concept of exceptional handling, which is present in Java language, which handles the exceptions, which can be caught or uncaught exceptions. So we're going to see about the exception handling and type checking mechanism in Java at a later point of time, but these points are the points which actually makes Java a robust language. Coming to the next aspect of features, architecturally neutral. That means it doesn't matter what kind of architecture we have, what is the size of the of the app of the system or what is the what are what are the permitted types which are used in the architecture. We can have a SaaS based architecture, we can have a distributed architecture, we can have a, a entire architecture or we can have a single system. In all these kind of architectures, Java language can be used. We can create codes for a single system based applications. We can create applications for a distributed system. We can create architect architecture which works over the cloud environment also. That is why it is architecturally neutral. Next aspect is portability. We will discuss about this particular thing. What makes Java port portable a portable language? It is because of the byte code, the concept of byte code. This byte code can be ported from one platform to another platform. So let's say I create a source code in Windows. The source code gets converted by the compiler present in JVM to a byte code. And this byte code can be taken to any other platform and you can run the same Java program. The only requirement is that wherever I'm porting the byte code, that particular platform should have JVM installed. High performance. Java is a high performance application in comparison to other traditional interpretations, but yes, it is slower than C++ because C++ uses the source code concept, whereas Java uses the bytecode concept. Other features are your multi-threading. Multi-threading is a concept in which uh, a single Java program will have uh, multiple execution path and each execution path can be used for a particular result. So this induces optimal memory management and since Java is a multi-threaded language, there's optimal use of memory. So in terms of points defined for multi-threading, write Java programs that deal with many tasks at once by defining multi-threads. Main advantage of multi-threading is that it shares the same memory. So memory management is optimum. 
Threads are important for multimedia. So why are threads important? Because we have a lot of multimedia applications right now, like videos or music, etc. Next concept is the distribution concept. It's the distributed language. We can create distributed applications in Java using the concept of RMI in EJB. But RMI in EJB is outside of the course of our particular training because we would only learn code Java as far as LNM is concerned. It is called a distributed language because we can have uh, functions or method defined in a particular system over the internet and we can use those functions and implement it in our applications that is why we say that we may access files by calling the methods from any machine on the internet and use it anywhere and that is why it is called a distributed language and that's all about it thank you very much uh, the video was a bit exaggerated because i wanted to cover up the features of java at one go all the features are interdependent on one another so creating multiple videos of the same concept would have created a confusion thanks very much for the uh, cooperation and thanks very much for the patience see you again